this is the SIG uh, SC10 lathe. I got a lot of these ideas from uh, Frank Hoos, the Koba 49 and uh, Blondie Hex. The first thing I did after watching their videos was decided I needed to build a cart of some kind to move the crate uh, from my driveway into the garage uh, because it wouldn't work because I have a gravel, uh, a gravel driveway. So I sourced this uh, cart kit. Each wheel can hold 100 uh, kilograms. And then I put together a cart. And the blue part on the cart there is made of bleach bottles, which are actually smooth. So I staple gun them to the bottom. Idea being to slide the crate onto the cart. However, the crate was damaged in shipping, so it did not slide. My neighbor had a forklift, so I ended up lifting it onto the cart with the forklift. Uh, thanks to uh, Johannes next door. I had beefed up my rafters with an extra 2x6 and then cross supported it against the other rafter so it wouldn't twist to hold the chain lift. And then uh, I set it up that way. I came with these extra tools inside, um, just included with the lathe. Um, this is the damage that was. Um, to create to damage the lathe in any way. And then I slowly unboxed. I just put the strap on to be safe in case something happened during this process. It wouldn't fall on me. Then I measured around the ways to make sure that I could uh, build a box because this thing has a tendency to roll. The center of gravity isn't in the center of the, uh, the ways. So I wanted to make a box that can go around it uh, so that I can keep it from rolling. So I just used a chop saw and built a box to go around it. And here I put a little spacer so that it wouldn't uh, damage the thread um, drive for the lathe. And then also for uh, the uh, DRO rail on the back. And then here I discovered that I forgot about the cabling, so I made a little Second cut to get around the cabling for the DRO so that uh, it wouldn't damage any of the expensive bits. My first estimation was that it was it would roll backwards, that it was heavy in the back. Turns out, no, it's actually wrong. It's actually uh, heavy in the front, uh, which is kind of counterintuitive when you look at it. You think, oh, just back is longer. And then I uh, unbolted it uh, from the base. 19 millimeter wrench and I gave it a slight lift and this is when I discovered oh boy it, it rolls forward it doesn't roll back so then I moved the string uh, the rope to the front but I didn't make the arm long for the front initially so then I just commit a, a plywood hack made it longer so that it wouldn't roll forward there you can see the rope I tied onto the chain so it wouldn't roll forward turns out that the CG was perfect from watching uh, Frank's videos I got that uh, CG down pretty good center of gravity was good so just lifted it up in the air while we um, assembled the bench, moved the crate, you know, out of the way and stuff. This is my wife, Borchek, working on the instructions for the stand. And then once we got the the stand assembled, we also needed to move it somehow. So I, I um, drilled out and bolted this um, square tube or rectangular metal tubing to the top so we could have a handle to carry it. Here I am <laughs> getting ready to lower it down onto the to the bolts finally. Uh, didn't take too long here. The cart really worked out well. This is what it looked like inside with the uh, Cosmoline grease to keep it from rusting when it's in storage in uh, China and going overseas and stuff. You can see they are test spinning it because you can see the splatter uh, inside which is good because it doesn't it doesn't come rusty that way. And then the, these connectors that were pre-labeled XYZ made it really easy to just plug into the back of the DRO. Easy peasy. It was super nice to have it labeled like that. And then I went into the uh, menu system, switched it to English from, from German, um, which was like a two-step process. That had included guides for both German and for English. So this is the install in a